Zoom is one of the world's biggest teleconferencing apps, but recently, for many of us, it's also become much more. As shelter in place continues all around the world, Zoom meetings have become our classrooms, our offices, our gaming lobbies, and even our concert halls. With 300 million participants daily, we can find a lot of reasons behind Zoom's success, like it's easy to get started, there's good teaching tools, and the mute button is very easy to find, at least for people who aren't my classmates. But despite these perks, Zoom has actually been banned by many organizations, like Google, SpaceX, several governments, and much much more. And the reason? Security concerns. You might have seen some of these Zoom security fiascos on the news already, and admittedly, most don't seem all that bad. But surprisingly, not many people know about by far the biggest and most important one. In a nutshell, it was a massive security hole discovered just last year, affecting about 4 million computers worldwide. If you were affected, all you had to do was click a single bad link. Then, not only could your webcam be hijacked, but in many cases, attackers could have gotten full control over your computer, and this is all without you having Zoom open or even still installed. And behind this crazy disaster is a story just like any of the classics. A story with heroes, with hubris, of calamity and redemption, and even at its core, a quest for immortality. In this video, my goal is to share with you how this all happened. If you don't know much about how computers or networks work, don't worry about it. I'll explain everything you need to know. The story starts, of course, with our hero, a strapping young software engineer named Jonathan Lightshu. One day in March 2019, Jonathan's just sitting there, pulling up a Zoom call, when he notices something a little fishy. Joining his meeting went really smoothly, but maybe too smoothly. Someone sent him a link, he clicked it, and immediately, this app on his Mac just launched and knew what to do. Initially, this all seems okay, but to understand why this should raise red flags, let's talk a little about how your computer works under the hood. When you click on a link, your browser first sends a request to some faraway machine running this thing called a server. A server is just a program that knows how to read requests and delivers responses that your browsers can interpret. The web page it sends goes right to your browser sandbox. Inside, it can still do a lot of stuff. It can embed photos, store cookies, even automatically send more requests to other servers. But what it absolutely can't do, in theory, is talk to anything else installed in your computer, unless you give it some very clear permission. Every browser has to enforce this, otherwise if you're clicking through Instapix and suddenly this fella just eats your whole hard drive and like ships it off to Russia, you'd probably be pretty pissed. After you click a meeting link, whatever Zoom loads shouldn't be able to get around this, even if it's to talk to its own desktop app. So Jonathan did a little digging, and he found that the meeting site wasn't even talking to the app that it ultimately launches. Instead, it was talking to some other mystery server, coming from his own computer. Wait a minute, his computer? He shouldn't have any servers running, he's not hosting any websites. And that's when he stumbled upon the tip of the iceberg. It turns out, when Jonathan first installed Zoom, Zoom also secretly set up what's called a local server. Local servers look like and work like any other server. To browsers, random web pages talking to it is totally fine. Not only that, the local server runs on your computer outside of any sandboxes, meaning it can launch whatever it wants, making it the perfect middleman for Zoom's one-click meeting join. Pretty clever, right? But here's where the problems start, as Jonathan noticed. While your computer won't block Zoom site from talking with this server, it can't block any other sites either. Remember, websites can send requests as soon as they load. So if you load a bad website, maybe after clicking a suspicious Reddit DM, an attacker can exploit this dumb middleman to forcibly join you into their Zoom call. And because meeting hosts can set all cameras to automatic on, it means, yeah, they can hijack your camera, and now your face is linked to all the Reddit comments you made. Not great. As Jonathan later said, this was already enough to be considered a major issue. But then he took a deeper look into the local server code, and he noticed something even weirder. He found that the local server had instructions for... downloading Zoom? What? Why would Zoom design a server to download its app when 
the server is only ever installed alongside the app. Hmm, a mystery. Unless... Jonathan had one guess. He uninstalled Zoom, looked for the local server again, and... Oh, it was still there. And running. Jonathan then clicked on a Zoom meeting link. Lo and behold, his sneaky server reinstalls Zoom, casually launches it, and immediately turns on his camera. The local server wasn't just a shortcut tool, it was a horcrux. A tiny piece of Zoom that remains immortal deep in your computer until it gets the resurrection signal. So not even deleting Zoom would protect your camera from hijacking. But that's not all. Later, another team named AssetNote found an even bigger issue. The local server doesn't just reinstall Zoom from a predefined source, oh no. It gets the installation link straight from whatever website reaches out to it. Ah, see the problem? But you know what, it actually does have some security. Before downloading anything, the server first checks if the package comes from a domain that ends in any of these strings of letters. So random sites can't just make it install non-Zoom stuff. Or can they? Would this work? Nope. Okay, looking good, looking good. How about this? Ah. Uh, yeah. Crap. Yeah, so you can just make this site and add whatever dangerous stuff you want to it. Just have your attacking site link to it as the installation source, and GG. The original research team just made a file which automatically opens up the calculator app when your computer restarts, and then they posted a very humble video of it working. If you don't know, this is how nice security researchers like to say, I could have destroyed your computer, but you know what? I'm feeling like a merciful god today. So to sum it up, if you heard that Zoom security was bad and uninstalled the app to protect yourself, random websites can now not only use your camera, but also get you to download, install, and run anything. So what came out of all this? Even without knowing the last part, Jonathan was pretty sketched out. He found Zoom's customer support and said, Hey, look, these are some serious issues, you gotta fix them. And Zoom said, yeah, okay, we'll do it, just give us some time. After not hearing anything back for a month, Jonathan then reached out to the Mozilla team. Because, hey, they're a big browser, they could add some security in the meantime. And the Mozilla point person was just like, hey man, this is cool and all, but, you know, it's not really our problem, just don't use Zoom. Uh, sir? Yeah? We, we use Zoom. Ah. Right. Shit. So Big Daddy Mozilla set up another call with Zoom, and they said, Again, okay, sorry, we'll fix it, it's a priority, we're on it. Okay, great, so then 90 days pass, and finally a patch comes out. Random sites can't just auto-open Zoom anymore, everything is fixed. Hooray! <laughs> just kidding, you can actually get around it with this one line of code. But they did disable automatic video, until it didn't work a week later. So Jonathan reaches out to Zoom again and says, Hey, it's not fixed. <laughs> What's up? And Zoom this time just replies with this big PR paragraph right here, which sums up to deal with it. At this point, our boy Jonathan's just about had it. He then makes this amazingly savage blog post, which I linked below, explaining everything, calling out Zoom, and even linking his own website that exploits the issue. So people saw his post, clicked on his link, and were like, Whoa, how did I get here? You can see my face. Super quickly, the post goes absolutely viral in the networking community. 41,000 upvotes, outrage, news outlets get in, it's looking real bad for Zoom. 24 hours after the post, Jonathan's still hanging out in his call, helping people get rid of their servers, when all of a sudden, the last person you'd expect joins the meeting. Zoom's very own CEO, I'm not making this up. And he actually did something pretty cool. He apologized. Told Jonathan and everyone else in the call to their involuntarily shown faces on his own app that he and his company really messed up. And he promised they would do better. And you know what? He delivered. Within a few weeks, Zoom completely abandoned immortality, deleted all their horcruxes, added join confirmation screens, and even began to partner with reputable security companies. 
They were still being torn apart by media and even needed Apple's help to fully clean up. But hey, it's a start. Flash forward not even a year and hey, what do you know? It's today. As many of these organizations will tell you, Zoom still has a long way to go before it can fully regain the trust of its customers. Nevertheless, a lot of us rely on Zoom every day for our livelihoods. So in a way, Jonathan Lightshoe is our hero. During his initial report, he was actually offered a non-insignificant amount of money to just walk away and keep his mouth shut. But luckily for us all, he declined and chose to make the internet a safer place. And his hero's calling wasn't anything fancy. No dragons, no swords from rocks. If anything, it was the literally most mundane calling anyone could ever get. So if you see anything sus going on with your tech, don't be afraid to look a little deeper. You might end up helping a lot of people. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this story and learned some stuff along the way. If you want to see more content similar to this one, be sure to subscribe. And as always, have an awesome day and don't be a stranger.